Hi everyone, my name is James, and today we're going to be talking about linearization via the Taylor series in the context of control theory. That is, given a nonlinear function, we would like to find a linear equivalent of that function so that we can apply the feedback control tools that we've developed during an undergraduate control course. To get started, let's consider the equation shown on screen here. This equation is what we call a Taylor series expansion of a function. So in this case, our function, which may be nonlinear, f of x, we can say is equivalent to the sum of terms on the right-hand side. The idea being, given enough terms on the right-hand side, we should be able to represent any function on the left, f of x. And so in a general sense, our linearization technique today is going to be throwing away the higher order terms of this right-hand side. So we're left with an equation of lower order that is only accurate to our original function around a localized area. So let's look at this equation in more detail so we can understand how this works. Okay, so our Taylor series expansion of f of x around a point x bar is given by this equation, which we see we have f of x is equal to f at x bar plus the first derivative evaluated at x bar times x minus x bar plus one half the second derivative and so on and so forth as we go here. Now, I think the key uh, things to consider here are firstly, what is this x bar point? Well, x bar is what we call an equilibrium point of the system x dot equals f of x. So when it's an equilibrium, we would hope that x dot, so how the system is changing with time, uh, is equal to zero when x equals x bar. So when we're at this equilibrium point. And you can imagine that in, say, something like um, an inverted pendulum. So if we had a shaft with a pendulum stick that can freely rotate around it, there's two equilibrium points here. If we were to just let go of the stick and let it freely hang, you would notice it would oscillate down until it hung vertically thanks to gravity. That would be one equilibrium point. And we'd actually say that that one's a stable equilibrium point because if I was to tap the stick a little bit, you'd notice it would oscillate but go back to that point. Also, uh, if your balance is perfect, you could hold the stick up perfectly vertically and it would actually stay there as well. So that's also an equilibrium point. If you were to take away your external forces, it would stay there. The problem is if you knock that point, uh, you'd notice that the pendulum would then fall down and it would end up at the other equilibrium point. So this is an example of an unstable equilibrium, but still an equilibrium. So if we want to take a Taylor series expansion of a function, we need to figure out what the equilibrium points are. And then we just solve each of these terms at that equilibrium point. So we get our original f at that equilibrium point, then we take the first derivative evaluated at that point, and then we continue for each of the higher order derivatives after. To illustrate this, let's pick a nonlinear function and we'll actually plot this out and see how the individual terms affect the plot. So at this point in time, we're going to assume that you already know the difference between a linear and a nonlinear function. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, essentially it comes down to whether or not a function satisfies a superposition and homogeneity property, which is just a way of saying it has to add and multiply in a certain way. That said, if you've never seen a nonlinear function before, now's the time to pause and just see if you can't find a video or a book to help you understand them. Okay, so the nonlinear function we're going to be looking at is a simple one, just x squared. Rather than showing that it's uh, nonlinear, we'll leave that to you and we're going to focus on the linearization process. Uh, so we'll just put up our Taylor series expansion equation up the top here and let's start by getting the individual terms. So in this case, our nonlinear equation f of x is just x squared. And our first term, f evaluated at x bar, will just be x bar squared because we're replacing x with x bar. Our second term, which is the first derivative of f evaluated at x bar, well, the first derivative of x squared is 2x. And at x bar, that will simply be 2x bar. And don't forget when we substitute that back in, it'll be multiplied by the x minus x bar term. Our next term will be our one half times the second derivative of f. So if the first derivative is 2x, well, then the second derivative is just going to be two. 
uh, evaluated at X bar won't make any difference. It's just going to be two. And when we substitute that back in, uh, our third term there will be two uh, over a half. So those two will cancel and we'll just get X minus X bar squared. And for now, we'll stop there and we'll just put those back into the original equation. And if we need more, we'll go get higher order terms later. So with the start of our Taylor series expansion filled in, we now need to pick uh, what would be an equilibrium point. Now, for the sake of illustration, rather than picking an equilibrium, let's just pick an arbitrary point and say X bar equals one. So if we choose X bar to be equal to one, uh, then our first term uh, would be X bar squared. So one squared is just one. And if we plot that out, we see we just get a horizontal line. Uh, it's not, it doesn't look anything like x squared. However, uh, when x equals 1, uh, it does intersect exactly the same point as x squared. So that's something, I guess. We can then try adding the second term. So f of x would be equal to 1 plus 2 times 1 uh, times x minus 1. Uh, which in this case is going to give us this diagonal line here, which again doesn't look like x squared, but again it, it does intersect the correct point at equals x equals 1. So let's just add in the third term, so 2 times x minus 1 squared, and if you actually expand that out, you'll notice a lot of those terms cancelled, and funnily enough, this plot is back to x squared. So these are actually all of the terms we need in the Taylor series expansion to exactly represent x squared. And what you'll notice having both of these graphs uh, on the screen at the same time is that actually around x equals one, that line is pretty close to the curve. And so, you know, the straight line isn't an exact model for the nonlinear system. However, around x equals one, it's pretty close and if we can ensure we only ever operate in that region then we can get a lot of benefits by using the linear equivalent rather than the nonlinear system. While there are a lot of reasons to use a linearized version of a system, I think the two most pertinent reasons uh, for us are firstly a lot of the control techniques you're going to learn in an undergraduate control course only apply to linear systems so this allows you to still control nonlinear systems using techniques you already know. Uh, and secondly, depending on the complexity of your nonlinear system, it can actually be prohibitively uh, computationally expensive to implement a control method using the original equation. So there are a lot of benefits to this approach. And I mean, this example here is pretty trivial, uh, but we'll uh, go through some examples in the next video uh, to show you how this approach can be applied uh, more practically.